In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Amen. The story of Thomas in today's Gospel illustrates our Christian experience. We are called to believe without seeing. All Christians have been called to believe without seeing. Thomas's doubt is hardly surprising. The news of Jesus' appearance was incredible to the disciples who had seen him crucified and buried. Thomas's human nature compelled him to want hard evidence that the Jesus who appeared to the disciples after his death was indeed the same Jesus who had been crucified. Thomas is given the opportunity to act on that desire. He is our witness that Jesus is really risen. Our faith is based on the witness of the church that has preceded us, beginning with Thomas and the first disciples. Through baptism, we receive the same Holy Spirit that Jesus brought to the first disciples. We are among those who are blessed because we believe without having seen. Today, we want to open the doors of our lives to Jesus as Thomas the Apostle did. We want to welcome him in our lives with his message of divine love and mercy. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water, the water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty ever-living God, who will the true water, the fountain of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us, and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body, and so approach you with hearts made clean and worthily receive your salvation. Through Christ our Lord.
us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what found they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy persons among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds to the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed each according to need. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. 
and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The Word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
Blessed are those who have not seen me and still believe. So it is, impeded by neither time or matter, Jesus, the risen Christ, addresses not only Thomas, but you and me as well. Within the intimacy of our hearts, he asks if we desire to believe in him too, and in doing so, to possess the freedom of the unalterable truth, finally and forever. For this becomes accessible to all who commit to the truth of his abiding love, and who live in accord with his wisdom. The fruit of such fidelity to Christ is the blessed gift of faith. A couple of days ago, my attention was drawn to some of the Easter decor that still adorned our home. There were some wooden pastel Easter eggs nestled in the corner of a kitchen counter with the words inscribed on them. One egg imperatively asserted the word, believe. It occurred to me that what it spoke to me could well be taken quite differently by others. In the wonderful world of Disney, it might mean to suspend disbelief and believe in the playful magic of your imagination. In the battle against the oppression of stress and anxiety, it might mean to be strong and to believe in yourself. To the soldier in the midst of combat, it might mean to never yield to defeat, but to believe in tomorrow. Even though each of these convictions may deliver a measure of comfort and benefit to the believer, none of them possess a universal and flawless goodness to be found in the belief in the gospel. Belief in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ Jesus, our Lord who redeems us in his merciful love. To the contemporaries of Jesus, his friends and disciples who loved him and followed him, the resurrection was an intensely palpable shift in reality. Even if they were not actual eyewitnesses to all of the events, they knew someone credible who was an eyewitness. Denial of the evidence confronting them would be to stretch the limits of reason too far. Their master did die on the cross, and they knew this was true because they witnessed it. And then they witnessed him alive, coming into their presence, casting about them the cloak of his real and unmistakable peace. The utterance that Thomas could not contain, my Lord and my God, seems in retrospect almost an understatement. But how does one put into words such revelation as this? People do not instantly change their habits, traditions, and ways of life easily. We know this from our own life experience and in the way we begrudge any suggestion that we should perhaps repent and change our lives. But here we have in our reading from Acts an entire community suddenly altering the course of their lives selling and offering their hard-earned possessions to live communally. There was no needy person among them. For those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. We who know our human history might sense a shadow of an occasion to sin in what reminds us too much of the Communist Manifesto. A different ethic, however, was at work here. There was no one taking advantage of anyone else, and nothing was forced upon anyone. This was truly a community of believers who had given their hearts entirely over to the risen Christ and to one another. As a result, they too would be rejected by the world and would suffer just as he had suffered. Nonetheless, these believers, even in their final suffering, would sing, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. This is all foolishness to those who are blind to the truth of God's love for them. But to those who respond to his call and who share his love with all other children of God, knows that his mercy endures forever. They reach out, especially to their persecutors, with this good news and proclaim, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. 
his love endures forever. Yes, indeed, something out of this world is afoot. It is the kingdom of God, and this world will never be the same. Would Jesus a Nazarene be any more than a footnote in human history if he was not begotten by God the Father? If the evidence of his life was nothing more than a series of clever hijinks and Gnostic teachings, would the Catholic Church have grown and flourished for 2,000 years? Would Christianity even exist today? Does not Jesus the Christ truly breathe and walk about the world today in the body of Christ, his church, responding with healing love and mercy to those suffering around us? We who have not seen but believe in him are truly blessed, must believe this as well. St. John the Evangelist, the beloved of Jesus, is directly succinct in his instruction to us about honoring our covenant with our Lord. We must humbly obey his commands, relying upon his wisdom and living in his hope. As John makes clear, for the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Christ Jesus is begotten by God, and he conquers the world. It is through our faith and our diligent service to him that we too are, in this manner, begotten by God, and we too conquer the world in Christ. We may wonder in our smugness why Thomas was so slow in coming around to believe what his friends had witnessed and experienced. Where was his faith? Did he not courageously volunteer to follow Jesus into Jerusalem and to there die with him? Why the doubt now, Thomas? Perhaps he was not yet prepared to place so much trust in the unfathomable wisdom of God or had yet to arrive at such a level of humility to accept that God did not need to have him fully understand, but needed him only to obey him. We can certainly understand that brand of doubt, can't we? Yes, his transient weakness in Thomas can run strongly through our veins as well. It is in our risen Christ's visitation to his apostles in that locked room that we behold the breadth of his abiding merciful love for us and the miraculous nature it would take on. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And so it was that the church was joined in our Lord's mission for our salvation. Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. And so it was that the Holy Spirit, the immaculate divine love that passes between the Father and the Son, was joined to the church to give its mission divine life. The apostles and their successors, in obedience to our Lord, would, by the power of the Holy Spirit, ordain priests to be with them the miraculous communication of God's healing love. Divine mercy is thereby poured out upon his children through the church, the body of Christ, and their community of faith. Let us pray for eyes to see, ears to hear, and the hearts to believe in the truth of the gospel. Let us boldly commit ourselves to live out the gospel by sharing our Lord's healing, merciful love with all others. Let us be the community of faith that believes and understands what it is to be the body of Christ to the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Lord Jesus the only begotten Son, born of the Father, begotten. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Catholic Church. I confess. We have not seen, but in the gift of faith we find belief. With such confident faith, we bring our concerns before God. For the Church, that the newly baptized and the newly received members of the Church will find both welcome and challenge. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, our prayer. For an increase in vocation to the Church, that men and women of all ages may respond to God's call to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life and that their faith communities may generously support them in their calling. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, our prayer. for the good of all nations, that the wealthy may share in the world's resources fairly with those living in poverty. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, our prayer. for the members of this faith community, that we may all strive to be of one heart and one mind in the risen Christ. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, our prayer. for the wounded, the sorrowing, and the hopeless, that they may know God's mercy and love in what they experience within their communities. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, our prayer. for the Witt family, living and deceased, that the loving bonds between them, as well as the evidence of our love for them, may bring them all to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, our prayer. for all the intentions we hold in the privacy of our hearts. That these intentions, the petitions we've written into the book of St. Matthew's and a place in our prayer line may be brought before our Lord through the loving intercession of our dear mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Lord, in your mercy, yeah, our prayer. Generous God, plant your precious gift of faith ever deeper in our hearts. All that we ask, we ask in the name of Jesus, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, O Almighty God. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the twofold, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Austin Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep of the hope of, in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and he in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may turn to one another now and share in a sign of our Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only Satan and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you for joining us uh, for this Holy Mass. Wow, that was a lively one, wasn't it? <laughs> I'd just like to remind everybody, this is the sound of the body of Christ. All right? So from the oldest to the youngest, uh, we welcome everyone here. Um, we serve each other. Uh, sometimes young parents, they are concerned that their children are bothering everybody. And of course they are. <laughs> However, I always think as uh, when my kids were young and, and going under the pews and such, I, look, I lived through that, better you than me. <laughs> so th this is all good. Uh, there will be a Divine Mercy Chaplet and Penance Service uh, will be held at Risen Christ this afternoon at 3 p.m. Uh, please uh, join, join us there. Uh, there will be an hour of confession from 3 to 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, so you may certainly take advantage of that as well. Uh, also uh, tonight at 7 p.m. here at St. Matthew's here in the church, there will be a spring benefit concert um, uh, for the Strings program. Uh, I believe Y. Uh, Mitsutani is also performing for that. There, it is free admission. Uh, donations would be greatly appreciated. Uh, all proceeds benefit the St. Matthew School uh, Springs, uh, Strings program. Uh, next weekend, St. Matthew's hosts the Feeding the Flathead. That's a community uh, kitchen. Uh, we do that uh, every uh, second Saturday of the month. This next one is April 13th, 6 p.m. Please consider uh, participating in this if you haven't done so already, maybe even if you have. Um, you can cook a meal, they're primarily crockpot meals, uh, and, or you could help serve, you could help clean up. Uh, it is at the uh, Central Christian Church. It's a way to reach out and come to know other people in the community who really benefit, really appreciate these meals we can provide. Uh, it is, uh, opens hearts and uh, helps us understand the community we live in. Finally, there's open enrollment at, for St. Matthew's 2024-25 uh, school year. Uh, it's now open. So if you have children or grandchildren or some other children you might love and care for, uh, please come by the school. Uh, we have information in the bulletin, uh, but the St. Matthew's website has much more information about it and how to register your children. If you think that costs are an issue, they're always an issue. However, uh, we have a fairly robust scholarship program, so please come in and, and ask questions about it and take a tour of the school. And finally, I believe there is coffee and donuts downstairs afterwards, so don't race out. You can go downstairs and join everyone. Thank you so much, and God bless. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Go in the peace of the risen Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Saint Michael, the Archangel.